You're listening to Empire of Rust, the world's first and only Transformers RPG podcast. Join the heroes of Icon as they defend Cybertronian civilization from the remnants of Cybertron First to Lord Starscream's egotistical leadership and beyond to the unknown threats on the other side of distant stars. Welcome back to Empire of Rust, the one and only, the singular and titular Transformers RPG podcast. And this is our episode 80. Can you believe we've been doing 80 episodes of this so far, huh? Yeah. Considering it was last, the last one was 79, 80 feels about right where we should be. <laughs> The math tracks. That, 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 <laughs> yeah. is a, that is actually a very general, good number to be, like, that, that shows your podcast is continuing, you know. I listen to a lot of podcasts, and when they get to 79, 80, they're like, oh boy. So <laughs> that's us. Oh boy. <laughs> Jiminy people Cricket! Are pe- people are still listening to this shite, you know. <laughs> the fact that we're still carrying on about it means that we're no better. <laughs> we're still we're still newbies after yep. all this time. <laughs> Not we are. wrong. Actually, you know what? Let me ask all of you a question here. So You we said are... no banter. You know, I said shut up. <laughs> <laughs> You're not doing either. <laughs> <laughs> we are right around the halfway point, I think, of the of the, the total campaign. Because we're we're just I think before like the, the middle part of the middle of the middle. Like, of the middle chapter versus the middle arc and all that. So I think we're, like, right right before the midpoint. Really? This right yeah. here, this sentence I'm saying right now is the center of your collective universe for the campaign. Can't help us. No, I said a little bit before the middle. All right. I'll wait. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me when. And we've been doing this for, for what, uh, two years now? Yeah, I think it's two years now. Uh, no, two years? I don't know. I think we're coming up on uh, three years. Really? Wow. Yeah. 26 episodes per year. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it? 26 that we that we release. Plus, there have been a few, you know, extras. Certainly. Sprinkled in. Yeah. I think the back half is going to go a bit quicker than the the front half, simply because, yeah, I hope like, so. <laughs> well, I know there <laughs> there was a couple of like chapters. I think at the beginning of uh, uh, the like towards like the middle to end of chapter uh, uh, of arc one, where it was, uh, they dragged on for a little bit, and you know that was that was my bad, certainly. Uh, like the what was it? The one where you you went to the to Oaks on that big ship there, the um. Shit, I forget the name of the uh, the ship. The Metallicus, man. Yes, the Metallicus. Thank you. The yeah, the the trip to the Metallicus and the the whole adventure with the the Spark Eater through Oaks. That was that was one chapter, and I think that lasted for like twenty episodes. That was a long one. Mm-hmm. It was that long? It, yeah, it was a it while. Was eventful though, it was very eventful. We, we had met a foe that terrified us, and yep. one of the party got killed. Yep. Yes, closest to death I've ever come. In this character. In this character, yep. <laughs> I have died before. But what happened to you in the game? Uh, you just re-roll, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> that would actually be an interesting... That'd be a good question for, like, another episode. Like, tell us about when a character died. It'd be an emotional start to the ep. Potentially. Mm. Or hysterical, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But yeah, eighty episodes, and if we uh, if we if we do the math out, and this is right around the midpoints, then uh, we're gonna go about one hundred fifty eps. So we're at so we're at the point where high or low is good for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> good callback. I like it. We'll have to talk about that more once we get to like the the true midpoint of it. But yeah, it's a, it's an interesting uh, interesting thing. Like it, we're we're pat we're just about to the the halfway point. So we're just about to middle age now. Gotta go buy a sports car, get a hair transplant. Go become a sports car. <laughs> Shiny red one. Oh my god! I'm gonna love you guys so much if you do that. Oh, uh, if you. <laughs> so you, last time we were talking about horrible things to turn into a toupee. <laughs> you know? Megan's gotten pretty close there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a lot better than a merkin. It's true. <laughs> 
All right. I've I've uh, delayed this long enough. I this lily is mighty gilded. Magnum, you stepped into Chromia's room and you got shot at with a laser blast. And it came straight for your face. You watched it coming towards you and it hits the wall to the right of your head. You're lucky this has my aim off. I won't miss again. You're not doctors or metallurgists. Who are you and what are you doing here? Listen, lady, we're investigating this, this this attack, so we expect your full cooperation. Who sent you? Your boss. And who is my boss? Windblade. What does she look like? Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what she looks I, like. I, I've I, never I, seen I her. I, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't have visual reference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this audio audio this audio only format sucker. The only thing I know about her is that she's barely alive, and that's because of you, so well done. Now, tell us how it happened so we can kill the person that nearly killed you. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> and with that, she will uh, she'll put her blaster away that was hidden under the recharge slab. You think that she probably smuggled or had it smuggled in. Because, you know, the doctors wouldn't allow that. Do you think that the, re- the recharge slab also recharges the battery in the gun? I don't see why not. It's right next Good. to it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sufficient. Nice. So does she, look, does she look 100% or does she look beat up? Oh, she still looks beaten up. <laughs> like, all of her, like, their chest plates and, like, uh, like all of the outer armor is, like, dented, cracked, and battered, and, and yeah. Uh, you know what, though? For the three of you, go ahead and make me a perception check. I will let you folks do a life science, but not right at the moment. You'll have to get closer and interact a bit more. 25 perception. 25, all right. 29. 29, all right. Wildstrike continues to show up, Carapus. 32. And Magnum continues to show up, both of them combined. (laughs) (laughs) It's the only thing I'm good at, man. (laughs) All is right in the world. Uh, All of you, though, can see that uh, it looks like her internals, like you can actually see through some of the cracks in, in battered sections and a hole in the center part of the chest. And you can see that it looks like the internals have been replaced. Uh, they look all kind of shiny and new. Uh, the outer casings, though, have not been. So essentially, she's she's healthy but scarred at this point. Yep. Uh, which tracks with uh, what she was yelling when you were approaching her room at the last episode? Does your uh, necromancy stuff like fix that, or are you literally just like the life force? Like, if you were to, like start channeling it in, would it all like boom, boom, you know, and straighten out? Like, you know, it actually might. <laughs> <laughs> you put enough energon in, you know. <laughs> you explode, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, you had enough. Uh, that could happen, yeah. <laughs> Given that we almost detonated an entire, you know, entire research facility, yeah. Except with a lake of energon. Oh, dude, are there energon stars? I don't know. I, not that I know of, but I'm sure that they could, they're good. That sounds to fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, what's the atomic weight of Energon? I mean. I know. E-N. See, I have always thought of it as a, as a compound, not as a, uh, as a, uh, an element. Uh, okay. Oh, it does. I mean, you could still do that. It's just like a star that's, you know, that's Energon is its radiation, like is its catalyst, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, but- Sounds pretty cool. Be a heavier star than usual. Yeah. yeah. Something between a neutron star and a black hole. It's either a purple hole or a red hole. What are uh, what are your names? Who are you? My name's Magnus. This is Carapace. This is Wildstrike. This is Nyko. Uh, that all of us. But this is Pythagoras right here. <laughs> Hi there. You, you lot, you're the, you're the heroes of uh, of Iacon, aren't you? We're just, we're just schmucks doing a job, okay? Uh, Windblade did mention you. 
she she thinks very highly of you, especially uh, Ambassador Sweetspot. I'm a my condolences on his loss. Thank you very much. He finally won a race. He he died first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like I like this one. <laughs> I like the dark humor. We need a description of what you saw and what you didn't see. Carapace, and... I made the same joke to Windblade when I heard it too. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't happy. Okay, okay, I like I like this one. Uh, what is she? What is she? Is she like Cybertronian? Is she a Karn? Is she? Uh, she does not look like she has an animal mode. Like There's no parts of that to her, but if you want to roll culture, you can give it a shot. Can we do life science? Uh, if you want to do life science, you can, but that's going to give you some different information. Uh, 14. Uh, 14. Mm, yeah, it doesn't grow well. Yeah, you can't tell too much. Uh, you imagine that if Windblade was a Camion, uh, she's likely a Camion as well. Because you do know okay. that they've been together for a while. Uh, you you can see that it, it she is a like she doesn't have any like animal pieces on or anything, uh, nothing rear, obvious. Rear, rear view mirrors. Yeah, you, you you do get the the kind of like auto kind of car sense okay, more than anything okay. else, but a little hard to tell. Right. Wild Strike Magnum. How about you two? Nineteen. Uh, yep. Yeah, same thing. You're uh, uh you can tell that it it's a mechanical alt form of some kind. Probably a ground vehicle, maybe a, a hovercraft of some kind, but... All right, only three more floors to go. All right, <laughs> I don't know if you guys are still listening, but I'm nearly there. <laughs> all right, guys, make sure <laughs> you follow all the right procedures. Don't, make, don't forget to hit any buttons before leaving. <laughs> oh, you're a nasty one, Magnum. <laughs> <laughs> 20 for culture probably not much better and a 27 for life science uh yeah not a whole lot more um you can uh actually well no i'll give you i'll actually give you a bonus on this one because uh she is in fact a camion uh she turns into effectively the tron cycle so it's a, a kind of a futuristic like motorcycle and she has been uh, Windblade's bodyguard for as long as you've heard of Windblade. Uh, now, life science. Uh, so you uh, you walk over to to Chromia and you know take a quick look at some of the damage on uh, on her, uh, and you can tell a, a couple of things. Uh, so the injuries that she received are uh, two. Uh, they come in two flavors here. One is a single shot through the upper torso. It looks like it went clean through her torso uh, and even melted a little bit of the the edges of it on the way through. Uh, you can't really tell with that uh, any of the da internal damage, uh, but as you imagine, it's all been fixed and replaced. Uh, and her upper torso also has many dents and breaks consistent with a, uh, a beating. Uh, so all the internal mechanisms have been replaced, but a lot of the outer armor seems uh, the the outer armor seems like it was melted through. So that little hole in there has a uh, like melted edges to it. Judging by the shape, and maybe I'll need the, the medical scans to do this better. But judging by the shape of the impacts, can we tell how big the the thing that was hitting her? Whether it was actually a fist, whether it was shaped like something else. Um, like a hammer or, or you know, or just sort of fort of force. I mean, is it smooth? Is it bumpy? Does it have finger marks? Uh, it looks like they were fists. So it looks like it was an actual, like, punch, punch, punch kind of thing. Uh, and you'll notice that compared to someone like Carapace, uh, you think that the the strength of the person who was punching punching her really didn't have a lot of, like, upper body strength behind them. So they, they weren't, like, a really, really strong bot. Uh, it looks like it might have been... Mm, I, kind of like a desperation kind of thing. Like, like they're, they're punching, but that wasn't their primary way of dealing damage. Uh, because a lot of the, the damage on the torso plate, they're dense, they're cracks, but they don't go all the way through. So the punch didn't go through the plate... 
it the plate did stop it. So probably the, only the fact that he couldn't be the person couldn't be seen was the fact that that's the only thing that kept him from getting creamed by this bodyguard. Hmm. Maybe. Was there any uh, paint paint residue or metallic residue left? Uh, not that you see. Uh, I'll get the reports to see if they found it while they were doing it, because they've cleaned things up by now. So mm-hmm. There might have been some. And you said that this was five days ago? Uh, yes. Yep. Okay. So, Denizen, as you, uh, as you walk down the hallway, uh, you see two guards in front of you. How's it going, fellas? State your business. I'm here with the others visiting, um, what's her name? <laughs> what's her name? I don't know. What is her name? Uh, Chromium, Chromia, Chrome Dome, here she is. I was delayed. I was with the others. Let me see some ID. Sure. Here you go. Why? She's an animal that's been on Earth for fucking thousands of years. Why would she have it a, a Cybertronian ID? <laughs> because that's what they need on Earth. And I couldn't have gone through the Star Stargate Bridge thing without one. She hasn't she hasn't she has an elk's ID. <laughs> and you said you're with the group of the others that went through. Yes. Carapace. Ma'am, I'm gonna have to ask Magnum. you to step aside over here for a moment. Over where? I look around. There's no one trying to get by. There's plenty of room in this hallway. Now step aside. Ma'am, I'm going to have to ask you to put your hands on your head. Why do I have to put my hands on my head? Ma'am, put your hands on your head right now. It's not the game of Twister here. You don't even have a spinner. (laughs) He pulls pulls his sidearm out and he like backs up a step. Ma'am, put your hands on your head. I get the claws out. You're going to draw it down (laughs) on me? You're quite the gentleman, aren't you? I told you who I am. I gave you my ID. Now let me by. You can see the other one get on the on his comms. All right, that's and it. I'm it rolling sounds like he's. <laughs> where's Where's the damn dice? Why don't we all roll for initiative, huh? Yeah, let's do that. Let's all roll for initiative here. Oh boy. <laughs> We've gotten in fights for some dumb reasons before, but <laughs> not this might not be nearly as dumb enough. Let me tell you. Hey, Denison, did you notice, or that's more specifically Adam, that they turn into dogs? No, they don't. <laughs> no, they don't. Tell me they don't. <laughs> Michael? I don't know. We'll just have to, we'll just have to wait till I turn to see. Uh, uh, Matt, what'd you get? 22. Carapace has an 18. 15 for Wild Strike. I got a 3. <laughs> okay. It's kind of low. And the guards got themselves a 15. A 15.8, so they will be going ahead of Wild Strike. So start us off here. Uh, Magnum, I want you to go ahead and make a perception check. 32. Okay, 32. You hear a ruckus and a commotion out in the hall, and you can recognize Denizen's voice. Uh, you also hear the sound of weapons being drawn. Guys, there's both a reckless and a commotion in the hallway. How is that possible? Didn't, didn't, I know. <laughs> I didn't think it was that big. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm only competent at causing a ruckus. I don't know anything about that commotion. <laughs> uh, the guards must have bought a commotion with them. <laughs> and they're drawing, drawing their weapons. That'd be a great duo. Like, ruckus and commotion, like, if that's the name of the guards. Like, <laughs> Now, what I'm saying here is that this here bear can't be coming down here making all this noise. Wouldn't you say, Lieutenant Commotion? That's right, Captain Ruckus. All right. <laughs> Uh, I will say that if you want to get all the way back to where the guards are, it's just going to cost you a move action. All right, I will. Um, pardon me, ma'am. There's a ruckus and a commotion to deal with. And the guard, and someone's drawing weapons. Guys, we might have checked this out. Denison's in trouble. So I will rush out to see what's going on. Chromie will try to get up. I'll deal with the commotion. 
<laughs> no, no, stay there. As far as you're all concerned, it might be another attempt on her life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I was afraid of when we first came in and heard the noise. <laughs> all right, so what do I see? Uh, you see both of the guards holding weapons, pointing them at Denizen. So a typical Tuesday. Denizen does have her claws out. In a fence. What are you guys all doing? Stop it. <laughs> Who are you? These are the same guards? We recognize them? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's only been like a, a couple minutes at most. And I know they called up they called up uh, Wind, Windblade, so I know they're legit. Mm-hmm. So, and you also remember that Windblade said all of the people with her, or with you, are the ones allowed in. All right. Guards, what's what's the problem here? I'm trying to get by these bulldogs here. I didn't, talk, I didn't ask you. Well, then <laughs> name who you're talking to, Magnum. Uh, it's impolite no. just to shout into a crowd. I said guards. I, I don't know their name. I'm sorry I didn't get to know you ahead of time. I apologize in advance. Officer Magnum, is, is this creature with you? She's claiming that she's one of your friends, but... Uh, I wouldn't go that far. I'm not one of his friends. I never named Magnum as one of my friends. It was Carapace and Wild Strike. She admits it. Shut up, she, she's, Shut up Denison, She please. says it yourself. <laughs> she's not a friend. <laughs> Raises up the guns, even like, like points and straight uh, at Denison. Uh, <laughs> she is an associate, I have to say. She's... So she, yeah, she's part of this investigation. Uh, I don't know what the hell happened out here, but... Bailing you out is a professional courtesy. <laughs> uh, yes. Sorry for the inconvenience. What do you... Uh, get in here. <laughs> Carapace, you want to take a turn? Oh, I didn't, I, I didn't get up at all. I didn't find no war, but best of luck to you. <laughs> Probably everyone can probably hear me shouting at them. <laughs> Wild Strike, you want to do anything? No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, and uh, Denizen comes to you. The uh, the guards are they still have the weapons pointed at you, but they're not shooting or anything. They kind of like, looks like they're they've kind of eased back a little bit. All right, uh, since they're starting to ease up a bit, and Magnum kind of shouted down, "Get in here!" That time, I assume he was talking to me. Yes. I would just lower my arms, retract the claws, walk by them, Schnick. shoulder bump hard into one of them, look at him square in the eye and say, as you were. <laughs> High or low, good for you? Uh, you know what? I'm going to go against the grain <laughs> as normal and say low is good for me. I rolled a one. You are super lucky. Wow. Aren't I just? <laughs> The guard glares at you on the way back. On the way by. I barely even notice him now. <laughs> You're barely a lot of things. <laughs> hey, <I'm>, oh. <laughs> the guards let you by. If I had rolled a high, a high on that one, I would have had him arrest you. Assaulting an officer. <laughs> well, oh. that turned out well. I'm just going to give the... Give the give the guards of one of the bottles I had stolen a long time ago from that ship of, of booze. As a consolation. <laughs> sorry, guys. Take a... Uh, sorry. This. She's from Eucharist, you know. Doesn't understand modern hospitals. Yeah. Oh. So, oh. Like, and one of them's like, oh, one of them Eucharins. Yeah. Well, it, 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 not that. No, not those Eucharins. Just that particular Eucharin. That and one the Eucharin. They're all, they're all like that. The other one gives him a dirty look, too. It's like, ooh, okay, this just got uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Here, here's some booze. Good. As a consolation. But the not one, for you. The one who said that <laughs> drinks. The one who didn't doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mental note. Mental note. Deep breaths, deep breaths. <laughs> you did have those lungs he's installed, gonna, so that's that's good. He's gonna light two cigarettes and go back in. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cybertronian hospital, so there's there's no no smoking signs here, right? Yeah, I know. In fact, no one thought to put if them. If you're up. not smoking, you're probably dead. <laughs> <laughs> and as I pass by Magnum to enter into the room, I'll turn to him and as politely as I can say, apology accepted. And I go in. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. Oh, God. Cares? What is going on? Um, sorry, gentlemen. Uh, she's she's from Eucharist. She doesn't know how these modern hospitals work. 
When you enter the room, you see a blue bot on a recharged lab that looks up at you. Who is this? This is Denizen. And who are you? I was told that there was someone who was badly beaten. And, sh- and she'll look at the, the three of you. Is is she with you? <laughs> <sighs> the law requires that I answer yes. <laughs> well, I overheard um, Windblade say that you kind of reacted almost before the attack like you had some kind of super reflexes or maybe you knew the attack was coming when you pushed her out of the way how do you explain that I saw the tracer line it's a a brief flash of red to indicate the target lock of a rifle I pushed her out of the way the moment I saw it and then I dropped my panic shield right on her once I dropped the, the panic shield, I moved myself into position uh, between where I thought the shot was coming from and, and Windblade, and then a second shot came in, and it went right through me. It's the damnedest thing I've ever seen. I've never seen a, a bullet just go clean through. And look at this. It actually melted through my torso plate. All right, so it probably wasn't ballistic then? Probably more of an energy well. type weapon. Wouldn't you see a carapace? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm assuming they... a projectile found on the scene. Yeah, I was assuming that they were able to determine based on, like, the blast pattern or was it, was it acid? Was it plasma? Was it cold? If they can't tell that in the hospital, then... Yeah, if you, uh, if you... I'm sure, Magnum, you will, uh, take a look at the, like, the, the medical chart uh, in the room, uh, and you can tell that uh, the bullet was a superheated form of plasma that melted right through the armor and the internals. It's essentially penetrating plasma shot. Kind of, yeah. Huh. Uh, the injuries seem consistent. Uh, it, it's speculation on the medical report, but the injuries seem consistent with a weapon called the Infernus Bullet. Uh, it was a weapon so devastatingly effective that its use in the war was actually banned on both sides because it penetrated through nearly everything. Infernus? So first In- first Fer- Cerebro shells and now this. Yep. <laughs> the Infernus bullet. Well, I'd say that's a lead now, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Chromium, did you get any idea how far away they were when they shot you? I don't know, but I think they were fairly close because it was only uh, it was less than a minute before uh, once the last shot came through before the beating started and I didn't see anyone that's no true indication could have been two people could have been someone up close to take take care of the leftovers and a sniper far away possibly but once the beating started the sniper shot stopped Ooh. When you saw the tracer line, could you tell where it was coming from? Uh, it was... It felt like it was fairly horizontal. So ground level, perhaps? Yeah, maybe. That would limit the range. Does the, does the medical report show any residue metal on the injuries that we could use to do, like, a identity analysis? Uh, it does not. I'm trying to think of like who would even have access to an Infernus bullet. I've dealt with them back in the you know d- during the war. <clears throat> I'm trying to remember. Do they have a um, like a unique chemical signature, like a scent? Because like in order to actually burn through, you're gonna need some sort of you know chemical chemical agent. It's a good idea. It's possible. Yeah. Yeah, you you definitely remember. It certainly does have a a fairly unique kind of pungent scent to okay. it. Okay. Uh, you think that if uh, if you were nearby, you might be able to to track it. Do you actually have scent? I uh, when I tur- when I turn into my um, uh, beetle form, yeah. So yeah, if it was close enough by, you probably could get a uh, get a whiff of that. We're definitely gonna have to go to the scene of the crime. Yeah. Right. Uh, how 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 large is with is um Chromia? Is she like tall for a bot? Is she? Yeah, more slender. 
uh, than than wide. Uh, she'd be a little taller than all of you, with the exception of Carapace. So when you were attacked, were the attacks coming from above or below, or like you know, like could you discern how large the person or the thing attacking you was? It felt like it was coming at chest height, so okay. this kind of a size of a, a medium bot, just okay. kind of punching. Uh, it it didn't come from above, so it, the fists weren't, or whatever impacts were happening, weren't an overhead strike, and they weren't lower than me. So okay, did you ever get a did you ever get a return? Did you ever believe to touch something yourself? No doubt, when you were trying to defend yourself, I clipped something. But it was a very brief hit. It was a glancing blow. Not enough for me to tell you what the shape of it was. Mm-hmm. Are you are you certain that this like, bear woman is with you? Uh, yeah, she's a consultant. Why is she pressing buttons on the wall? <sighs> I, I deactivated those. <laughs> That's why there's nothing happening starting to become a standard standard precaution when we walk into a room. <laughs> um, let's see. Do you think... I don't know. I don't know if this can be done, Mike, so I'm just going to propose it in game terms first. A proposal? Go on. Using the mind link device, could we project somehow project what she saw in her memory so we can look at it? And just maybe there's something that she missed visually. What about your own internal Interesting. Recordings? So it was a medium-sized bot that wasn't particularly strong, that didn't have a lot of combat skill, and a sniper using illegal ammunition. Probably. Why were you where? Why were you there? Sort of a deep question. The <laughs> Be- because a big clown hit me. <laughs> 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 I mean, I would find a quarter every time I heard that. I know, right? <laughs> it's uh, a quarter. <laughs> we were uh, just walking back to uh, her her home. Um, yeah, I was just traveling. Give me a sense motive. Nine. <laughs> we all do that. Well, yeah, I suppose you're you were all listening. I assume you weren't hiding the question there, Pat. So no, no. Uh, yeah, uh, sounds sounds legit. It sound, sounds like they were just walking back and they were ambushed. 39. 39? What? Yes. Is that legit? Really? Yeah. And I, got my <sighs> I mean, he got an 8 of plus 2. Got myself a 25. He did, he, I rolled 20, and I have a plus this, a 17 modifier. Fuck wow. Jesus. It's Magnum's thing. I mean, yeah. he notices things, you know, yeah. and figures out what people are thinking. You know, that's really the only thing he's good at, plus talking, you know. <laughs> he's supposed to investigate stuff. Son of a bitch. All right. And he has a 20 uh, wisdom, so, I mean. Denizen, I, you hear this answer, and it sounds a little suspicious, like Chromia is hiding something. Magnum, you hear this answer and you know for a fact that she's hiding something because her home, Windblade's home, was in the opposite direction. They are far closer to Chromia's home than anything else. Ah, uh, all right. Please, ma'am, you, we need all the facts if we're going to investigate this properly. I'll stand up and move closer to her bed so I can observe her better. We have nothing but the best intentions, but you have to tell us exactly what you were really doing. You were headed towards your own house, weren't you? Not hers. You, uh, you understand that that this has to remain between us. This can't get out under any circumstances. All right, hold on. I will turn on the radio jammer. Yeah, ah, nice, nice. Is there a window, or are we inside of the building? Uh, I'll say there is a there is a window. Okay, I will go stand in front of it. Okay. okay. So um, I I have jammed all communication and recording devices in this room and comm devices, and he's in the way of the window. So we will keep this between us, but we need to know the information. Wild Strike Denison, you two want to do anything? Uh, I'm also going to move to the window side of her bed. 
But I'll still be closer to the bed to observe her. Okay. When she gives her answers. Uh, nothing in particular for me. Okay. Uh, she kind of lowers her voice a little bit and uh, and says, uh, Windblade was actually uh, heading... Like we were both going to my place to spend some time together. Uh, we have recently become Conjunx Endora. Uh, and this was our private time. Sense motive? Can I carry over? Ah, uh, yeah, you can carry over. You, uh, you believe that. Sorry to pry into something personal, ma'am. We just uh, needed to know. I hope that you guys can feel comfortable enough to be public soon. I'm, sounds like a, a wonderful thing. Yes, um, Mazel Tov, <laughs> I suppose. Is is there actually like a is is there like a gender, like? Do transformers not like gay people, like <laughs> like because they're they're beyond <laughs> gender? No, uh, not at all. I mean. It, gender doesn't have anything really to do with it. It's just about who it is. Oh, okay. So, like, so high-born, it, low-born. A, a bit, yeah. Okay, it's It's okay. like a, uh, it's like, yeah, it's like royalty falling in love with their bodyguard. Right. <laughs> yeah, so okay. She, she, mar- she married her, her staff, basically. Right. It's yeah. It's basically marriage, right? Uh, yeah, sort what of. What she's talking about. Yeah, I Most mean, there's, there's no, like, I mean, there's no marriage, you know. What have you? Yeah, but. well, I mean, the closest as we get, you know. Right, exactly. Don't no worry, your secret's safe with us, and uh, congratulations. That's right. So. You can rest easy there. You'll be fine and safe with us, ma'am. With your permission, we'd like to uh, extract your visual memory of the attack, so to, to get it to do an analysis, see if there's anything we might have been missed. You can do that. Yes, Gary. Well, I mean. It, won't work unless you're willing, you know. I won't give you any, it won't take any information that you don't want to give us. Just, it's sort of like describing for a police artist. All right, Magnum, do, uh, do what you need to do. All right, um, I guess I'll connect, Pythagoras will connect Magnum to one of the video monitors and then just uh, put the hat on her head. And he will download uh, the video of the attack time. That's how that works. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And replay it on the video screen for everyone to see. And we can see if there's anything we can see. Sure. And, yeah, you, you kind of see, like, from her perspective, what is happening with the, the attack. So we see the flash of red where the, the targeting reticule uh, shows up, like, right on Windblade, like, right on her, uh, right on her side. And... The ca- the camera view from her perspective d- dashes forward and like slams into Windblade, pushing her to the side. Uh, and you hear the the sound like the impact sound of a of the bullet hitting either the ground or something off to the the side and behind her. Uh, she'll grab a device from her waist, uh, tosses it at Windblade. It effectively acts like a grenade like it attaches to her for for a moment and then it kind of like blows up into this like solid energy shield uh that is fairly opaque like you you can see through it a little bit but it it really does hamper visibility like quite a lot uh and then as soon as that shield comes up you hear the the crack of another another shot uh the camera kind of lurches back like it just got impacted and she looks down, and she can see like this glowing, kind of like 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 superheated like metal from her her torso uh, that's now been superheated. So it just kind of went like straight through, and now like her her the hole in her torso is like glowing a bright red. Um, she puts herself kind of between the the shield and where uh, she thinks the shot came from, and and yeah, she holds that position for uh, for. A, almost a minute and then you see the camera like lurch boom to the side as as it felt as it felt like something hit it and then it happens again and it keeps on happening and she she pulls her shield up and tries to like block the impacts but every time the shield goes up the impact just goes hits around it 
She takes a swing. Nothing really happens except for like the one time where it feels like they got like a, a slight glancing blow as like her her hand kind of came down and around, and you hear just like that metallic little tang, like a ping. So very very brief blow, uh, and this this goes on for for several minutes until you hear the sound of kind of sirens off in the distance, which you would imagine is the. Uh, uh, the authorities that were that were summoned from the use of the panic shield, uh, and then the the beating stops, and Chromia just kind of crumples to the to the ground, beaten to all hell. Can we see anything? Um, distortions, um, marks on the ground, um, maybe where I think someone was stepping, like. Uh, out sort of on the peripheral region that she wouldn't have been paying attention to. Sure. And in the air, like around her, no. But uh, the four of you will take a look down at the, on the ground, and you do see the kind of like scrape marks or like the, the like debris and like sand as it is shifted around from people stepping, from a person stepping on it. Uh, it doesn't happen too often, but yeah, you do notice something on there. Right, but visually, there's no, there's no. It's not like if you're really close, you could see like waves or anything like that, ripples. Correct. All right. Well, I'll disconnect. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, that was very helpful. Yes, we, we're pretty sure that it's a person. I mean, there's a lot of evidence for that already, but now we see that the marks they make on the ground. Scientifically. Buh, 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 buh. Would this be considered subjective or objective? Like, if, 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 what's her name? Uh, Chromia was somehow mentally convinced that someone was invisible, like mental invisibility. But if some other person walked by, they could see the person. Um, would that have affected the footage we're seeing? You think so because this feed was directly from our optical sensors, and if something had convinced her that she didn't see it, then it was blind to, to all of her. Because we got to put that together with the evidence that they, they intentionally blocked out the cameras, so they didn't want other people to see something. So it's possible that this was a personal thing. Um... Windblade didn't see anything either, but she might have been affected. Yeah, also, like, who would know about this? <clears throat> I mean, like, because the, the preparation to take out the cameras to get into a sniper position, you know, I mean, I guess it's likely that, oh, like, she would go to Chromia's house every so often, but at the same time... No, yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. I mean, it could be like a jilted lover. Wouldn't that be hysterical? If it was just, like, <laughs> a jealousy thing and had nothing to do with the politics... Because <laughs> you know, uh, and, and, and Infernus bullets feels personal, like and, and dirty personal. <laughs> you know, I got gotcha. you. Um, can I analyze, analyze the sound of the gun Ooh. and try to determine what the model is? She was on the ground before we heard the I'll shot. Compare it, <laughs> compare it to <laughs> any other sounds. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, go for it. I will. Uh, should I run? Or should I roll? Uh, physical science, probably. Can I make it? Is he able to share this with all of us, or is it just him? Yeah, he fed it I into mean, the you... the like, the room's wall monitor. So yeah, you can share okay. it with you. Can I? So can I try? Because like, I'm kind of a weapons person. Yeah, yes, so definitely. Go your, for it. Your your experience would be valuable. Ha! Natural fucking twenty, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh... So what skill would that be? Probably science. engineering. Or no, I'm sorry, physical science. Yep, uh, physical science. I'm ass at that, but uh, so that means I have a 25. 25. Right, that's, still, that's good for a plus four. I assume you're aiding. Oh, uh, I hadn't thought Are about it. Aiding? I hadn't intended to, but... Uh, All right, well, then we can both do our roll. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I got a 26, and you got a 25. <laughs> With those two, I will actually give you a, a piece of information that you wouldn't have normally gotten. So, this, like the sound that this makes, 
does not correspond to any weapon that either of you two have ever heard of. That's a pretty long, that's a pretty wide breach for him. That being said, it bears similarities to weapon formers. Oh. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. All right, well, we'll make note of that signature, audio signature. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, keep a copy of the recording. We're really doing the CSI thing today. I know, right? I was just like... <laughs> 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 this whole, like, being able to, like, relive other people's experiences is pretty dope for that. <laughs> Eat your heart out, Maclock. <laughs> well, you two are. Dennis is pressing buttons. <laughs> chair goes up, chair goes down. Chair goes up, chair goes down. <laughs> okay, let's... Let's go to the scene. All right, uh, one other thing. So, uh, we really appreciate your help. Gromia, this is uh, very useful, very useful for investigation. I know you're eager to get back to your protection. What is your objection to cosmetic, the cosmetic repairs? I simply don't need it. I just need the... I just need the armor to be whole again. So... I just need these dents banged out and the cracks and everything filled up. You kind of get the get the feeling that it's more just like a hey, I, I I need to be out doing something right now. It's not that she doesn't want to get it repaired. It's just that it's like you're keeping me here to repair my torso plate. No, right? Don't yeah. freaking do that. She she wants to get out and just be fully functional to do the protecting she wants to do for her job. Exactly. And yeah, so sounds sounds a little like Legionnaire too. Yeah. So. She is a bodyguard after all. I'm gonna do my best to get you out of here as fast as I can. But uh, just promise me that you'll you know, you'll get yourself taken care of when everything's calm. Uh, of course I will. Alright. And you be, be sure to find the bastard that did this. Oh yes. We'll be looking. They'll get they'll get what's coming to them. <laughs> 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 wow! She'll I, look I, saw like a, the, I was like the twisting, you know, the twisting of the mustache that wasn't there before. <laughs> Never go full evil. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I went full evil there. Yeah. She looks over at Carapace. I like this guy. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, on the way out, I'll corral the doctors or the nurses. Okay. Um, oh, oh, I'm, I'm, yes. Uh, what, what is it? What, what can I, uh, what can I help you with? Oh, I'll wait, wait. First of all, I will extract a promise from her to not assault anyone else in the hospital while they fix her up, because I'm going to make sure they do the, do just the work they need to do. So if you, if you don't beat them up, it'll go faster. Promise. I promise that I won't beat anyone else up in this hospital until my torso plate is fixed. You have to, it, not shooting them either. And, uh, maybe just wait till outside of the hospital? Yeah. How's that? She looks kind of downcast. All right. Fine. Yeah. Unless it's an assassin. But, yeah, it has to be a real assassin. Okay. <laughs> if they attack me first, I'm going to hit them back. All right, yeah. Well, we approve of that. <laughs> All right, now I'll corral the doctors and nurses. All right. See, we need, uh... By authority vested in me by the <laughs> Department of Ambassadorship, we need the soldier operational as fast as we can. So, um, your instructions are to just fix her armor, no cosmetic repairs, and get her back to duty as soon as, as, soon as we can. All right. Give me a quick diplomacy check there. Oh my god, that was fucking wonderful. <laughs> the Office of Ambassadorship. <laughs> 27 for my diplomacy. Ooh. Okay. And yeah, you think you uh, you convince them, and uh, one of the nurses uh, goes to get a welding torch and a hammer. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> uh, I think our work is done here. <laughs> uh, them hitting you with a hammer and burning you with a melting torch does not consider them attacking you. <laughs> I'm still counting it. <laughs> <laughs> There's only so much we can do. (laughs) 
So yeah, if there's nothing else, the the four of you, the five of you, head on out of the uh, the hospital of a central reclamation and denizen. That guard gives you a really mean look as you walk as you walk by him. Hey, is that the asshole? Is that the asshole one? Yeah, I, yeah. I look right at him, and I shoulder bump the other one. <laughs> <laughs> It's gotta be bizarre looking. She sneaks over, boop. <laughs> as as the other Yukarin in the group, I'm just like <sighs> shaking my head, just like, oh god. It's like a fucking pup. <laughs> Hyper aggressive. It's like a cub in the forest. Alright, let's get out of here. We, we don't need another brawl in a hospital. Uh. Oh, I never thought I'd be saying that. Another <laughs> brawl in a hospital. <laughs> the mean guard uh, uh, like moves to go after you, but the one you shoulder bumped uh, holds him back. So, like, were you in that when you were in the elevator? Were you singing that song like "You take the fast road and I'll take the slow road"? <laughs> <laughs> no, that wasn't I the song it. that was on there at all. It was an in part from Earth, I believe. It was. Um, and I could walk 500 miles. <laughs> and I could walk 500 more. It's a bigger man who walks a thousand miles who fall down at your door. You know. Why would they fall down? Because they're humans. They get tired after walking 500 miles. Can they believe wow, they're, they're a weak species, yeah. <laughs> but it is a catchy tune. You make it out of the hospital with uh, no problems. Uh, Denizen presses all the buttons in the elevator cab on the way out. I think she learned her lesson, at least being in it. Right. I'm still going to get mine, but I'm going to wait till we all get off for ours. All right. So what's the next step? Scene of the crime. Scene of the crime. Yeah. That's right. Yes. That's where we need to go. You get back in your auto cab, and it drives you throughout the city. It seems like it's taking the long way around. Well, I don't mind. You know how uncomfortable Earth cabs are for me? No. They're terrible. I can't fit in them. Yeah, but you just, like, sit on top or, you know. Hey, I put my feet on the rear bumper, and I just kind of lean over the top of it. You know, if I even gonna, like, put, put a leash on it, put a leash on it, take your cab out for a walk. You know? That, I think you're misspelling it. That would be a cat. Take your cat out for a walk. <laughs> it's all right. I, I, wasn't, it's not a dog. I, I wasn't misspelling it, but that's okay. You know, like, I can sure? see how you would think that. Yeah. Have I, you I been am. to Earth? <clears throat> um, have I? Have you? No, no, I have not. It's a tricky place. It is indeed. You can get all Take turnabouts care. on there. I believe you. The cab pulls up to effectively like an intersection, uh, but it is kind of an intersection in not like a great part of town. Uh, the like all of the homes around here are like efficiency homes, like almost like motels, where there's like one, maybe two rooms at most, and then you know that's that's kind of it. Uh, it's they're just places for for people to sleep, and you know that that's kind of it. Um, but there is a uh, kind of like a uh, like an more open area towards the back of one of the buildings, and that is where uh, Windblade had said that the assault took place. Um, the cab door opens up, and the little meter pops up. Bing! Uh, it is fifty Shanix for the ride. Like I said, I, you think they, the cab went uh, a long way around for some reason. Okay. And Wait, googly, yeah. Moogly, 50 chance. <laughs> I think I left my wallet in the other pelt. <laughs> God damn it. All right. I'll give him a $50 bill. Thanks, Magnum. You're the <laughs> best. I can't believe I just <laughs> said that. Yeah. Thank you very much. The five of you walk up to where the... Uh, where the attack took place, and you see three bots that are just kind of hanging around, kind of in the back over here. They see the five of you approaching, and they think, hmm, 
easy mark. <laughs> you got three bots heading towards you. Roll for initiative. Next time. Ah, you oh. slut. Uh, <laughs> Dirty. That's right. <laughs> Bitch. I gotta see if they're slicking back their hair and they're spinning the, the watch on the chain. No, when no. you're a jet, you're a jet all the way from your... <laughs> From the secret files of Teletran 1, Empire of Rust is written and gm by Michael Ordway. Headmaster Magnum and his partner Pythagoras are played by Matthew G. Denizen. The Mysterious Druid is played by Adam Hu. The Decepticon Warrior, Wildstrike, and his partner Nyko are played by Mike M. And Carapus, the Beast Soldier of Primitive Eucharist, is played by Patrick Finn. Additional characters are played by Michael and Cassandra Ordway. Empire of Rust is supported by the humans and networks of planet Earth whose online networks provide access to libraries of sound effects and music, such as Storyblocks, Sasplat, Blue Zone, and Dark Fantasy Studios. We are distributed by the Transmissions Podcast Network. Stay up to date with all the latest news and reviews in the world of the Transformers by going to transmissionspodcast.com or searching for the Transmissions in your podcast app of choice. You can communicate with the heroes of Iacon by joining us on the Transmissions Discord channel. There you can discuss episodes, talk to the cast, and download the rule set used in the Empire of Rust. Teletran 1, signing off. <laughs> <laughs>